Well, hello again, and welcome to Chair Interval Training. This is Lynn Hardman, your ACE Certified Silver Sneakers and Flex Instructor, but you don't need silver sneakers to enjoy the benefits of this exercise or any exercise. Just keep moving at your own pace, and don't do anything that hurts. And by all means, before you start this or any exercise program, consult your doctor. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> and um, if you feel dizzy or out of balance at any time, it's recommended that you do the entirety of the class in your chair. But as you're able, and as you know best for you, do your best whether you're seated or standing. So, we're going to use our best posture, whether we're seated or standing. We're going to use our best breathing, and this will make our movements easier. And that's the goal of this class. Every time we meet, the goal is for you to move with greater ease. Not tomorrow, not tonight, but right now. So focus on how and now, best posture and breathing. Now, I think I can start that music. The music makes it a little bit easier for us to move. I'm going to start standing, but you could stay seated if you want. Um, go at your own pace. And let's get going. Oh, I forgot to tell you. This exercise program is brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs. Yay! And... Yellow Springs Senior Center. We love our Senior Center. Okay, if you are standing, please stand tall. If you are seated, please sit tall. In this manner, with our ears over our shoulders, over our hips, we can move with greater ease. Imagine a book on your head. And balance it there. It's okay if it bounces a little bit. Take your arms in that cross crawl pattern. What does that mean? Opposite of your legs. This helps connect our right and left brain hemispheres for better coordination. <sighs> okay, breathe. Like you're smelling fresh air. Ideally through your nose and out through your mouth, but effortlessly. If you ever feel out of breath, then you're working too hard or something not good is happening. So please pay attention to your body and your breath. We're gonna use a scale from one to 10 to gauge our exertion. Okay, so our goal, if one is the lowest level of intensity and 10 is the highest, our goal is a four to a seven or possibly eight. One is, okay, I can't wait. I'm going to exercise for all day. And 10 is like, oh, I have to sit down. I can't even talk. We'll also use the talk test. If you can't talk, you're working too hard or something else is going on and you want to get attention fast. Okay. Have I ever told you the three rules of exercise? Come on over here to the right side of your chair. You really only need one rule. Rule number one is have fun. If you have fun, you'll probably do a little bit more and then the exercise will have a better chance of having its great effects. Rule number two is keep breathing. It's not fun to stop for too long, so don't do that. <laughs> Remember, number one rule, have fun. And rule number three is if it hurts, don't do it. It's just not fun. Take that right foot, if you would, and let's take it forward and back really nice and slow. Tap your heel forward and your toe back and your heel forward and your toe back. Keep that imaginary book on your head and move your arm opposite. How about a little bit faster? Heel, toe, 
toe. Heel toe. Use that chair to your advantage. If you're in your chair, you're going to have to scooch over to the right side here. Kind of get your right cheek off of the edge. Cheeky. Good. Let's leave our right foot forward. Long, strong spine. And hinge at the hip. Just a little. Keep your chin up. Eyes wide open. Reaching forward. Lifting your toes and your fingers. And soles of the feet down. Wrist flex. Woo! That felt good. Let's see if we can walk that right foot behind us now. On the toe. And in our split stance or lunge stance. Keep the head tall with that imaginary hook as you lower and lift in this lunge stance. Use your full, safe, comfortable range of motion. We're just warming up, strengthening, and balancing. Now let's hold steady here. Exhale as we tuck the tailbone under. Inhale as we open the chest. Exhale as we close the spine. Inhale as we open. Try it again. Limbering up the spine is very good, very important. Push that right heel to the ground, would you? And lean forward for a little calf stretch. Excellent. Let's try that whole little dynamic stretch and balance series over here on the left. You can sit back down or stay in your seat whenever you like. But whether you're seated or standing, best posture. And let's take that left foot forward, heel tap, back, toe. Very slow. Heel, toe, arm is in opposition. Heel, toe, head is stretching up. Heel, a little bit faster, but control. Heel, toe, heel, toe. Good. Breathe. Feels good to move, doesn't it? Let's leave that left heel in front. Lengthen our spine. Pull the navel in like someone's got to pop you in the belly, but we won't let them. Keep your chin up above the level of your heart. Reaching forward, unless your arm doesn't like that, you can shorten the lever to soothe your shoulder. But if you can, lift your toes and fingers up, and then down. Wrists and ankles are very important for our activities of daily living. Work that left leg back behind you and on the toe or the ball of the foot. Best posture, ears over shoulders over hips. Let's just lower and lift our body. Go at your own pace. Go at your own safe, comfortable range of motion. If anything hurts, reduce the range of motion or skip it. We're going to move on to something else right in just a few seconds. So tuck your tailbone under and open your chest. We've got that chair as our balance check. Exhale as you close. Inhale as you open. Ah, that felt good. Okay, we're going to continue to warm up in our chair. If you are very careful as you come to the front of your chair, to line your heels up with the front legs of the chair. This puts you at a better position to use more of your hip musculature and thighs with that wide base. Plus, if you lost your balance or your knee or your hip complained and you whoop, found yourself falling, you would lay right in the chair. So that's why I suggest you keep those feet close to the chair, and you definitely don't want a chair that rolls. Now that we're safely seated, that was our first squat of many, I hope. Sit at the edge of your chair. Have your water nearby, I hope. And as well as, I failed to mention, your trusty rubber ball, if you have one, and your rubber band. And just sit tall and let's stretch out our right leg and our left leg. You know what? 
let's skip that part. We already stretched out our legs. Let's step out to the right, out to the left. This is a pattern we're gonna use later on, a little faster. So we're just rehearsing it a little faster. It's called out, out, in, in, a little faster, if you like. But you don't have to go faster than you want to go. Maybe you can go top speed. Woo -hoo -hoo. See how that raises our energy level, our circulation, and our heartbeat? Let's keep this wide-ish stance so we can stretch the inner thighs and possibly the rear shoulders. So gently guide the knees right in the same direction as the toes, but open at the hips. Ah, and then roll one shoulder, perhaps from your back pocket to your front pocket, and then ease that other shoulder from the back pocket to the front. Very good. Walk those feet together. Hey, let's walk them back out and in and out. Just warming up those ankles and wrists. Awesome, in. That was a coordination challenge. Hey, just like always, we're gonna focus on the A, B, C's. A is for agility, B is for balance, C is for coordination, and S is for strength. But we will get periods of cardiovascular exercise as well, and this is our first opportunity to do that. Can you get cardiovascular exercise in your chair? You bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> but if you want to, this would be a good time to transition to the air. I'm going to first demonstrate from the chair how to do that out, out, in, in pattern. But this time to our left, out. If you're standing, please be behind your chair so you can use it. Go slow. Once you get your feet out wide, I want you to try to have your weight equal a little faster. Equal in both feet once you get them out wide. Try it again. If you're standing, you're behind your chair, right? That's so you can use it as a balance check and keep it in your vision. Are you ready to go a little faster? Out, out, in, in. Now we're moving our hands in conjunction with our feet. But this is a good time to work on coordination. I hear a bit of a disco beat. We could try maybe some disco arms. That's harder than it looks. I'm rolling right or left and right. Left, right, left, right. Now I'm backwards rolling. Uh oh, I lost my feet. Open and shut. I told you it was harder than it looked. How are you doing? Can you talk while you're doing this crazy thing? Maybe you don't like to do the arm movements. Will it still work? Yes. Yes is my favorite answer. Do you want to go faster? If you said no, you're right. If you said yes, let's step on the gas. Faster. Out, 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 out. I got ahead of myself there. How are you doing? Do you want to stampede? Crazy heat. Wow, that's kind of hard in the chair. But I do notice, keep moving at your own pace. When you're seated, you might get a little overuse of these quadricep muscles and hip flexors. And when that happens, we need to balance it out by pulling our feet back taking a break, or going back to the last thing that did not use these muscles. So be mindful, and if you want to continue, you're right. I'm going to show how it looks in the air. If you're in the air and you want to return to your chair, take your time. I'm going to get behind my chair, and this time we're going to start with our right foot slow. Weight is equal in right and left. We're using that best posture a little bit faster. Out, out, in, in, good. We're going to have a little mini squat when those feet get out wide. Do you feel that? Strong. 
One more slow. How about the tempo now? Out, out, in, in. Okay, I hear that disco beat. Let's try another coordination conundrum. You've got your chair if you need it, but take your right hand. Is that my right hand? Yes. And when I step to the right, I'm going to point to the left. I want to point to the, you know, disco arms. Point and look, and point and look. And if you don't get that, don't worry. If your arm doesn't like that movement, don't do it. How are you doing? Can you talk? Good. Keep those feet moving. Out, out, in, in, out, out, in, in. Now let's see if we can do that left arm. Up and down. Diagonal and down. Up diagonal, down diagonal. Half of a letter X. Hey, if your arms are working and you'd like a challenge, let's make the whole letter X. Are your feet still going right, right? Out, out, in, in. No arms and fast feet. This is the agility. Why do we work on agility? Why does it matter? Well, first, it strengthens our heart and lungs and circulatory system. That's awesome. But research shows if we're able to move our feet fast at will and our legs are stronger, we're less likely to fall down. Whew. Speaking of falling down, I hope you don't feel like falling down. How are you doing on that perceived exertion scale? One being, come on, bring it on. And ten being, whoa, stop. Can you talk out loud? I hope so. All right. Well, we're going to work a little bit on balance now. And I'm going to edge over here to the right. So you can see what I'm doing. Very simply, we're going to lift those knees up, right and left. You could do this in the chair, it'll work. But whether you're seated or standing, that's posture. Woo! These are single knees, one each side, with the arms moving in opposition. Simple, yeah? Well, let's make it a little more challenging, if you please, by taking these singles and doing doubles. Two now, two here, two there. Got our chair. Our benefits of our exercise program always must outweigh the risks. It would be risky to try this without something to check our balance. Good, let's add a little more challenge if you're ready. And if you're not, you're the expert on you. You don't have to. Let's try four, four, three, two, Woo! Four, three, two, wow! I'm starting to feel that on my quadricep muscles. So let's change it up a little bit. How about just march it off? Let's situate ourselves behind the chair again. I'll show you from the side. We're going to do butt kickers. Okay? These are good for the hamstrings and hips. But let's get started with a little mini squat. Down and up. Like posting up on a horse if you ride English. Now lift your heels toward your hips. Keep that head stretching up for the heavens. And if you like, you can add a little opposite arm curl with that leg curl. Always one hand free to check your balance. <sighs> Breathe. Are you ready for that challenge? Let's do doubles. Two here. And here. Good. Try not to touch the chair, but it's there for us. One finger has ultimate balance power. We could also put our toe down when we need a check or some stability. Good. Are you ready to add a challenge? Four here. Three, two, switch. Four, three, two, switch. Woo! We've been moving quite some time here. Let's try one more set of fours. I think I messed up my count there. But it's 
that's okay. How are you doing on our perceived exertion scale as you make your way safely, deliberately to your chair? Remember, a one would be, okay, good to go. I'm ready to exercise. And a 10 would be, whoa, can't even talk. Got to stop right now. Well, we're going to transition from a focus of cardiovascular to lung strength. And our number one, you guessed it, lower body, total body exercise for good health, strength, and it really increases our likelihood of living independently. Squatting. Body weight squats with our feet super close to our chair. Head stretching up, hips stretching back. Hinging at the ankles, knees, and hips. That's called triple flexion. Sometimes we're limited by one of those sets of joints. Maybe a hip aches. So if you can't go through a full comfortable squat, just do a mini squat. If squats hurt your knees, sit down and you can substitute some other exercise or rest. And I'm really working up a thirst. I should have offered you a drink earlier, but you know you. It's time to get a good sip of water. I have some water, but I'm going to take my time, step to the side, hold the navel in like a safety belt, because that's what it is, and step to the side and lean to the side. Your abdominal muscles are really a girdle that protects your spine and your internal organs, so we've got to keep them strong. Here's to a strong core. Okay. Hopefully you've got a ball and a band. We're going to be using those. We're going to use our ball and our band. But I'm going to take this tubing and just wear it like a safety belt while I get the ball situated. And I'm going to sit back in the chair so I can strengthen these hamstrings or leg flexor muscles. When I'm seated back in the chair, I'm going to put the ball behind the right knee. Float that right foot off the ground with the toe dorsiflex. And squeeze the ball, drawing the heel back toward the chair. Squeeze and exhale. You may have to work on this to situate the ball so that it doesn't squirt out. If it does, take your time getting it. Keep tension on the ball and do not hold your breath. Keep that toe up. Your shin's going to get stronger. Now if you want to take a break, we're going to add an optional upper body exercise. Grab your tube so that it looks like a giant smile. And then grab it so that you've got a straight line or a tight rope about the width of your shoulders. We're going to add a rowing motion, reaching for the ceiling where it meets the wall, and tucking your elbows down. So each time we pull that band apart, we're keeping tension on the working muscles, and we're squeezing the heel back. So hamstring curls with lat pull downs. This is a tricky little exercise. Do your best and you will reap the rewards. Breathe. It's very contraindicated, dangerous sometimes to hold your breath while you're doing strength exercises. The goal of any strength exercise is to run out of gas. The technical term is momentary muscular failure but I like to say fatigue. I'm about out of gas, how about you? Woo, just put that tube on your lap, focus on the ball, and let's try the other side. Now is there a good reason why you wouldn't do the other side? Yes, it's called pain. If it hurts, sharp, sudden, or shooting, stop. You can do the upper body exercise. Get that ball situated, hang on, and pull the toe up on that left foot, dorsal flexing, as you squeeze the heel back. 
Make this challenging for you. You can stop whenever you want to. You can take a break to get set up for this lat pull down again. But this time we're going to do it as a letter X. Sort of a diagonal. Good. Working at different angles strengthens different aspects and different muscles. Because life happens at different angles. And we want to be ready. Did you know strength work, if done properly and regularly, to momentary muscular fatigue, can help strengthen your skeleton, of course, and reduce your rate of musculoskeletal injuries. Well, I'm about at that momentary muscular fatigue point. How about you? Woo! Relax. Let's get that ball out. We're going to play a little hand-eye coordination game with our ball. I'm going to suggest you come to the edge of your seat. Sit tall. We're going to exercise our peripheral vision. That's our ability to see things that aren't right in front of us. So I want you to focus off in the distance at a point across the room. That's posture. And maybe place your ball in your right hand. Sit tall and see if you can just toss it a little bit. Now if it's too challenging with one hand, you can do both. But try. So we're using our peripheral vision and a little hand-eye reaction time. And if you want to add a leg extension to this, stop for a moment, watch. Lift your toe up, pull your navel in, and try that again. Lifting your foot each time you toss the ball. Eight, seven, six, ooh, five, four, three, two, one. Did you know the reason why, other side, why exercise instructors count backwards? That way we know when we're going to finish. If I was counting up, you better watch out. Get your eyes focused across the room and just do a little toss with your left hand now. Remember, if it's too challenging, you use both hands. If it gets away from you, don't launch out of your chair. See if you can add your leg extensions. Lift. Let's squeeze those quadriceps. Try eight, seven, six, five, four, three. This is hard. Two, one. Woo! I felt that. How about you? Time to tuck the ball and hand away. Get another sip of water. As you do, please be slow, mindful. Use good technique. Step to the side, lean to the side. Laterally flexing our spine is easier on the low back than forward flexion. That's why we don't go too far forward. It can cause more risk than benefits. Okay. Time is to change the focus back to one of cardio. Oh, I feel strong. How are you feeling? Remember, the goal is a four to an eight for that perceived exertion. Being able to talk is really important. So, we're going to do our fabulously tried and true skate fly pattern. Best posture. We can do this in the chair if we're right at the edge of our seat. And why wouldn't we be? It's so exciting to be together, albeit virtually. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I hope you join in regularly. Even just 10 minutes of exercises, 10 times, 100 times better than zero. Okay, this is our skating pattern. Let's do eight, seven, six. You can stand up if you know it's right for you. Now fly, heels up, hands too. If you're standing, you gotta hold that chair, that's fine. Now skate for eight, 
seven, six, pull the navel in, you got this, four, three, two, fly for eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, let's do four skates, four, three, two, four, flies, Whee! and skate, down low, and fly, up high. Let's try two of each. Skate. Fly now. Woo. Skate. And fly. One more to set up two. Now one of each. Down here. Up. Woo. If you're standing, this could be a really big exercise. I wanted to try it seated. Let's try four more. Three. Two. One and freeze. That's kind of hard in your chair. And then freeze as your skater. If you're standing, you'll be freezing like a statue in a balance pose. We can try this again. If you're staying in a nice four to seven zone on our perceived exertion scale, tell me how you're feeling. What? I didn't hear you. Okay, if you want to keep going. If you are standing, you'll be behind your chair so you can use it. If you're seated, you can follow along. This is a great one in the chair, folks. Let's try the other way, starting with that left leg and skating. Good, ready to fly? You can use that chair, one hand on it at all times or pole. Or none. Skate for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, fly. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Let's try four in each. Four. Out. Four. And skate. Four. And up. Five, four. Are you ready for twos? Down. Up. Breathe. Keep your head high. Good. I hope it's good. <laughs> Are you ready? Down and up. Here we go. Woo. Awesome. Got your chair there. Four. Three, two, get ready. One, fly, freeze, and skate. Freeze. Ooh, how are you doing? March out, catch your breath. Give me a number, one being super, super, super fine. I can skate all day. And 10 being I have done flown as long as I can fly. Okay? We're going to change the focus here pretty soon. But I want to show you that pattern where it looks like in a different angle. Remember in the warm up, we were doing a heel and a toe? What if we do our heel with our right foot forward? Heel, and then toe back with that left foot. Toe. Heel. Toe. You can kick it a little bit if you like. Heel or kick and toe. Here it is with the heel tap. Good. This is slow. Let's do it faster. Heel, toe, heel, toe. You can kick it. You can touch your chair the whole time. Four, three, two, one, let's take that heel up in the air, keep that head stretching, balance. You can always put your foot down on your knee. Now the toe back, but float it in the air, float your head up to the sky. Balance, strengthening that hip. Excellent. Let's do that pattern. If you're feeling fine, on the left, with that chair in our right hip pocket, take your left heel forward and your right toe back. Left heel forward, 
right toe back. Good, this is nice and slow. One more time, you can kick it if you like. Now to tempo, kick and tap for heel and toe, front and back, left and right. You can add those oppositional arms if your balance is good. You can make this really big or little. It's good for us, whether you're in the chair or in the air. Good, how about four more? Three, we're bringing it home. Two, one, let's balance with that left foot in the air. Crown of the head stretching up, strengthening that quadricep. Step together and take that right foot back. Keep the spine high and tall. Squeeze that glute and balance. This one's hard, strengthening the hip. I'm about ready to take a seat, how about you? If you're already there, you are right. The rest of us are gonna catch up with you. Get those heels as close as you can to the chair so that you can feel it and you know it's there for you should you lose your balance or a knee gives out or you just wanna sit down and reach your bottom to the seat, right? But do your best. Hey, that falls snuck under there. <laughs> Hinging your hips back and get settled in your chair when you're ready. Good time to get another sip of water. Do be mindful, please. I know I sound like a broken record. But that's okay, it's a good record. Ah.
may feel like starting an outward motor or um, an old-fashioned gas-powered mower. Many of us have gotten smarter and gotten electric mowers or hand mowers. I don't know anybody with a solar power mower. Ah, but some of us are even smarter. And we just replaced our grass as much as we can with native species. That's healthy for our environment. And that is smart. But we still have to get strong. So do your best. Rotate if it feels good. Pulling that navel in. Strengthening the rear shoulder and the upper back with this row. Strengthening the obliques with the rotation. And the biceps too. Wow, that was a piece of work. Woo. All right, we're going to do another little exercise. This one, we're going to use the ball, but not the band. So, take your time. And this one, we're going to do a little abdominal exercise. But less for the obliques and more for the rectus abdominis. But we'll do a little both. So, here we go. This one is going to involve sitting near the edge of our seat, pulling or bracing with that abdominal mus musculature. Pull it in, tuck your tailbone under, and lean back. Your hips have to be right at the edge of your seat to get the most of this abdominal slide. Slide forward where you still feel tension, and back. It's just a couple inches, really. And if you like, open your hands nice and wide as you lean back, and then squeeze because grip strength is very important for our activities of daily living. Gardening uses a lot of strength. I like to garden. So this is my gardening boot camp. I also like to cook. And you know, the kitchen uses a lot of forearm and grip strength. Now if your thumbs don't hurt, you can squeeze with them. Your thumb opposing all four fingers. And you can even do it without squeezing, but pull that navel in and do your best. So we're going to change the direction of this ever so slightly. But let's do our best until we reach that momentary muscular fatigue. You could make it a lot harder by reaching overhead. Oh, that makes it a lot harder. I've only got about one more of these before my forearm starts to break down. That's not good. But we're going to work on a diagonal again. A little bit different grip. Let's place this ball between our elbows. You can interlace your fingers or pray. <laughs> but focus as you squeeze the ball in between your forearms or elbows and feel the chest and the anterior shoulders get stronger. Exhale every time you squeeze. It's very important. Now, let's work on that diagonal. Reach that left foot out and let's pull that left knee in as we squeeze with the pecs. Now we're using the obliques. Rectus abdominis too. This is a really challenging exercise, so we're not going to do too many. Just do your best. You can always shorten it or stop. I'm going to try my best two more. Wow, that was hard. I need a little break. I'm going to take a deep breath, open my spine. I suggest you do what works for you. Now we're going to finish off with that other diagonal. Okay? Get that ball situated between the elbows. You will. Stretch that right leg out this time. Get comfy. Squeeze the ball as you pull the knee away. Tuck the knee up. This is a whole body exercise. Using the obliques a lot. Using the pectus, pec, pecto 
pectoralis. Oh heck, your chest and your shoulders. Sometimes the simplest things aren't easy, you know? Like talking while exercising, but breathe. This is a very challenging one, so we're gonna do our best. For me, that feels like two more. I am running out of fuel. Wow. That's hard. Who comes up with these crazy exercises anyway? I need a sip of water. <laughs> Sometimes I try them out on my family first. Step to the side, lean to the side, have a sip of water. Wow. Okay. Hey, I think it's about time to start to slow down. Could that be? I forgot to mark the time on the. Um, yeah, I think we're going to slow down. Well, let's squeeze in one more little balance exercise, shall we? Okay, so that movement we were doing in the chair just now, let's see if we can mimic it slowly standing, if you please. If you're not up for that, it's only going to take a minute, so hang tough. If you're going to try this balance exercise, we'll be behind the chair. Take your time. Make sure nothing's under your feet, except for the soles of your shoes. Now let's stretch our right leg out, out, out. Pull your navel in and come to a diagonal. Stretching that right arm up. We put our left hand on the chair, or we can put our foot down to check our balance. Balance in this long, strong diagonal. See if you can pull that elbow toward the knee. I've got my hand floating just over the chair because this is hard and I want to be able to grab the chair whenever I need or put my foot down. Do you want to try the other side? This ball keeps good. If so, set it up for success safely. Hold the navel in, stretch your left foot out, lean your body and create that long, strong diagonal. Floating your foot in the air, stretching your spine out to its longest and strongest. Put our chair if we need it. We could also put our foot down. But let's try to balance. Knee drawing closer to the elbow, keeping the spine and the torso stable as much as you're able. One more time. Wow, that was great. If you're standing, let's take advantage of that and get a little calf stretch. If you're seated, it's a little bit more difficult, but do your best to draw your foot back. And just gently push the heel down towards the ground. With the heel slightly behind the knee, you should be able to get a lengthening on the back of the calf muscle. Pull up to the ball of the foot now. Squeeze that calf muscle strong and then release your eyes. Paste your heel back on the ground. Let's see if you can lean a little tiny bit further forward without any discomfort. Stretches should never hurt. They're very therapeutic. They're one of a couple things that improves almost immediately with our exercise. Okay, let's try this other side. We've got the chair here. We can walk that left, sorry, that right foot back. So our flexibility gets better as we move. We know this. Every time we get up in the morning, we're a little stiff, aren't we? As we start to move, we limber up, become more flexible. Pasting that heel on the ground. Now lifting up to the ball of the foot, squeeze the calf muscles strong and tight. Relax, release, place the heel back down on the ground and lean forward. Just a little bit more. Good. The other thing that usually improves nearly immediately when we're exercising is our mood. 
Wow, I wish I could sell that. <laughs> Feeling good, it's priceless. Hey, last time to do our squats together, if you please. Heels close to the chair. Keep your head up. Spirits too. Get your hips back. Weight is equal on your right and left feet as much as you're able. Come up with a little power. Tuck those hips under. Squeeze your cheeks together and down, slow, three, and up. Down, two, three, and up. We're going to shoot for eight more, but if you don't feel like it, that's fine. Seven more. Woo! This has been a very demanding class. How many more? Let's say four more. Those of you who have exercised with me for a while know that I'm really not the best counter. <laughs> Two more. Last one, we're gonna go all the way down. Slow, slow, slow as you go. Woo! Wow, I'm thirsty. How about you? How are you doing with your exertion? Are you pretty, pretty close to an eight, maybe? Maybe not, that's okay. Step to the side, knee to the side, get a sip of water. I'm going to step to the other side to lower the music level a little. Take your time with your nice hydration. I think it's a great time to remind you as you're getting a sip of water, we're changing into a warmer season. And our thirst is generally driven by heat, but very hot temperatures or very cold require more water to thermoregulate. And it's so important if your body gets off just a couple of one degree or two degrees, or you're more than one or two percent dehydrated, health challenges get really bad really quick. So stay hydrated, stay healthy. And um, along those lines, if you're outside, if you're out there working in the sun, get frequent water, take frequent breaks, and slip on a long sleeve lightweight shirt, slap on some sunscreen if you have it, or I glasses or sunglasses that have UV A and B or you could slip on a hat protect yourself from that sun this one's from the American Cancer Society let's slow down and sit a stretch or stretch a sit I'm very grateful as always to have the opportunity to do this I'd just like to acknowledge my gratitude to my friend that has allowed me to use this basement for going on good grief. Well, let's see, I've been in here since the end of March. That's a while. Almost two months now. Stretching the hamstrings by lengthening the spine. Tailbone back and toes up. Try to keep your head above the level of your heart and support your back on your opposite lap. And give this a moment as you take a deep breath and exhale. Let's pull the navel in towards the spine like we're zipping up those tight trousers. And lean back as we stretch the back of the hip, knee to the chest, and rotate the toes in a nice smooth circle one way and then the other. So thank you, friend who's loaning me this basement. Let's try the other leg. And thank you to Community Access Yellow Springs and Station Manager Sean Devine. Thank you very much. Sean has been working extra hard, I think, with the rest of the fabulous village government, bringing all of the important meetings and town halls and village council discussions to our homes safely. I really, really am grateful for that. 
Let's sit tall, pull the table in. I'm also very, very grateful for our local government. I've said it before, but I don't think I've said it enough. Draw that knee toward the chest. Village manager, Josue San Laurent. Wow. Gracias. Muchos gracias. Muchas gracias. Si. <laughs> And Mayor Pam Kanai, way to go. I think they both wrote a letter to the editor this week in the All Springs News. Let's turn our bodies sideways. Um, they've been pretty busy, actually, as have all of the other folks that are essential workers. From the folks that are mowing the grass in the parks that are becoming safer and safer to use with social distance. I know I've been out there to throw a ball once or twice. Anyway, our hat goes off to all of our local leaders. They have struck a very good balance in my opinion, between risks and benefits. And balance is so important as we ease that right leg back. Balance not just in our physical stability, our ability to not fall over, Balance on our exercise program. You might notice or you might not that our classes together attempt to strike a balance between cardiovascular or aerobic health and strength or musculoskeletal health. We also need balance in our diets. Let's take a nice deep breath. Think about that. The field of nutrition is a science, and it's a relatively new science. And it can be very confusing at times if you don't have a good background in nutritional science. I know really intelligent people who have a difficult time with nutrition. Let's stretch to the side again. Because it is a science and we keep getting new information. And so we have to balance that out with what works well for us, what's sustainable. Uh, and even the best diet on the planet won't work for me or for you or for a population if it's not sustainable on the individual level. So healthy eating. I have to find foods that I enjoy, because if it's not fun, remember that's the number one rule, I probably won't reap the benefits as well. I won't stick to it. So we're going to relax, but I'm going to talk to you a minute longer about balance. Just as it's important for our physical health and our nutritional health, it's also important for our mental and emotional health to balance and reduce stresses and increase our joys, seek relief, asking for help, giving as needed. But I think the balance between opening and closing for this coronavirus is going to be a very delicate one that we need to keep testing. We need to keep getting new information. It's a science. And it's, it can be confusing because we get sometimes some information and then we get more information. We must keep our mind open. We must keep our ears open and listening critically. We've got to keep our eyes wide open and strike a positive, healthy balance, one that's sustainable, one that balances the needs of our economy with our own personal health and our public health 
and maybe even the planet's health. Think about that. Maybe the best thing we could do for our own health and for our public health will be in turn the best thing for the economy because it's sustainable. I hope and pray for that. And I know we are smart. Let's take some time and rest our brain a bit so we can think of great new things tomorrow and the next day and the next day. If we settle back in our chair and support our spine and relax our mind, research shows stress reduction makes us more effective thinkers. We have better execution, um, mental execution, and we can sleep better. And our brain needs sleep, so relax. Close your eyes, rest your shoulders down in those back pockets, rest your hands on your lap, and just breathe. Every breath effortlessly energizes every cell in your body. And every exhale releases what you don't need. As you breathe in, expand your lungs to their fullest, starting at the bottom. And like a wave, filling your lungs, slow, relaxed, all the way to the top. And as you exhale, the converse will happen. Just take your time to breathe in at your own pace and breathe out. As you continue breathing, you can try counting with your breathing practice. And if you're truly relaxed, your inhale might take one to three, possibly four less counts, whatever your measure of count is, less than your exhale. So when you're truly relaxed and physiologically and emotionally relaxed, your exhale should take a slight bit longer than your inhale. Okay, that's one good way to measure. Without measuring, we're just guessing, aren't we? So, stay tuned to science. Stay tuned to this channel. Stay tuned to your body and trust in science and stay strong and safe. And remember, as we go back out to beginning to go to normalcy, this isn't a light switch. So, be mindful, be safe. Keep it safe and simple. Until next time, bye-bye.